Right then, crop rotation in the 14th century. Oh. <coughs> Who did this? Right, dictation books out. Oh. Come on. Back once again with the ill behaviour. Make someone smile. This spreads no say. Watch comic relief. The launch. Thursday, 7:30 on BBC One. Five, six. Les Charles, choreographer for the Rolling Stones. Maxine Simon, stylist for Cher. Steve Levine, Arthur Baker, Grant Mitchell, Ray Hedges, Charlie Rapino, Nigel Lois, and Gus Dudgeon, producers of the biggest names in the music business. I can't believe it's Gus Dudgeon. It's like production royalty. Facing the biggest challenge to date. Raw talent, original material, and just 48 hours to create a brand new superstar. If they don't like it at this hour in the morning, they can do it themselves. Much more than just a talent show. Oh, yeah. We want to win this competition. Ronan Keating hosts Get Your Act Together. Sure can know. On February 6th on BBC One. Trying to save probably the worst lawn in history on BBC Two in a moment. If you've ever had trouble with your patch of turf, some handy tips. It's a question of sport here on BBC One in half an hour, but first, all work and no play. Being a vet does wonders for your social life. after graduation and the vets are beginning to wonder whether there isn't more to life than work. Hannah Pollard has been in Southend for a year now. Her vet school friend Sam Robinson is settled in Humberside and Truda is still in Bristol but affairs of the heart are on all their minds and they're not alone. Skye is a young Doberman and the Bird family thinks she might be pregnant. If she is, it would soften the blow of losing her companion, Dylan. Dylan was three. Um, he died on his birthday on the 23rd of uh, May. We had him for approximately two and a half years. And he was rather larger than Skye. Dylan actually died of a twisted spleen, which is very common in larger breeds. Um, big shock. Um, he um, unfortunately mated Skye. I mean, we didn't want to breed from her. This season, next season, yes, but not this season. But, um, jump the gun, I'm afraid. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, I mean, we're all hoping now that she's pregnant because the, in, the ironic thing is that she might be pregnant with Dylan's pups, which is quite sweet, really. Okay. So how is she, then? We're not sure. Yes. We're not quite sure. You're not sure? No. Has she put on any weight? Yeah, no. Just a little bit. So how many days would she be now, then? Be six weeks tomorrow. Six weeks tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right, hello, hello, sweetheart. We're going to have to squeeze your tummy a bit. Come on, six weeks tomorrow. If Skye is six weeks pregnant, she should be giving birth in three weeks' time. She has put on weight, hasn't she? Eating me out of house and then you. I mean, she looks very pregnant. Mm. I mean, she looks very different from how she was last time, but then yeah. again, they can go into false pregnancy, so. Mm -hmm. that, and that can be, they can be put on weight and the mammary glands can develop so it's sometimes quite hard to differentiate between the two. Yeah. But the easiest way to have it confirmed is either you take an x-ray or you can scan. X-ray I would say is the most... Well, most the x-ray. Yeah, but it's going to be too early today. Yeah. So if you want to know for sure whether she's pregnant or not, bring her back next week sometime. Alright? Alright, bye. 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 At Hannah's practice, Peter and Janet Gooch have brought in their pet rabbit, Pebbles. His days of philandering are definitely over. He was noted last week, and uh, Hannah said that he is very much overweight. So he's coming back for a checkup today. We just thought he was cuddly, but he's a house rabbit, so he lives indoors. And as it's the first rabbit we'd had, I just kept feeding him with all his treats. 
And he does usually have chocolate drops, which he's not allowed anymore. So um, he's a little bit depressed at the moment. <laughs> Hannah has put pebbles on a diet, but so far he's only lost a quarter of a pound. You look, you look happier than you did last week, anyway. <laughs> I have tried to keep his food down. I know what you pair are like. <laughs> <laughs> He's not, you know, he's not outside, and mm -hmm. you've told me before he's a bit of a couch potato anyway. Very much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he needs to be eating something that's not got a lot of calories in, and mm -hmm. it takes him a lot of effort to digest. And hay and grass are the natural feed of a rabbit. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they have to eat vast quantities of that to get a decent amount of energy. And that's what he needs. He needs his guts and, and his teeth and everything to be working mm -hmm. properly because this is a problem we're sort of seeing with rabbits, that they're now going the way of cats and dogs mm -hmm. and getting overweight, because he is a little bit overweight already. Um, the exercise does need to increase. It is things like getting the rabbit running up and down the stairs and running around the house. Um, now is a good time to start with him mm -hmm. and start sort of changing his habits. Right, lovely. Yeah. Okay, super. See what happens. See how we do. I know how he feels. I've been dieting forever. Yeah, <laughs> we all. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Yeah, right. see you later. Yeah, Thanks a lot. Take care. Yeah, and you. Bye bye. In Humberside, Sam's having a break from horses. The surgery is full of household pets, including his, a non poisonous ball python who's making a repeat visit with owner Sue Pullen. And she's going to hide. <laughs> like you, Missy. Come on. When you head out. Let's have you. Um, the problem with her at the moment, um, with my daughter's noticed that her mouth is swollen from the side, and we were concerned about, about her because she was very off colour. And when we had a look at her underneath, her mouth is actually quite inflamed. Uh, according to the book, uh, it states mouth rot, so we need to know now the process of how to look after her. She eating? When uh, did she have a meal? A fortnight ago. She's due to be fed tomorrow, so I need to know whether or not we're allowed to actually feed her. Um. Mouth rot is a bacterial infection, fairly common in reptiles. Oh, that's nasty, isn't it? What they do believe is that possibly vitamin deficiency plays a role in ulcerative stomatitis. Yeah. Um, so ideally, we need to be thinking about possibly supplementing her with some vitamins and minerals. Mm -hmm. uh, vitamin C is the most important one. Yeah. So we want to repeat her antibiotic injection that she has, which she doesn't like very much. Uh, at the moment, she's going down my sleeve with my jumper. <laughs> <laughs> well, she can stay down there if she wants while I inject her. Yeah, <laughs> with a best play. You, young lady. You can't go away, you know. She's oh, I can. Do you? That's exactly where I want. <laughs> and where's halfway along? Oh. Here, we're here. Sam starts the treatment, but later it'll be down to Sue to give Hiss her medicine. There we go. Come on, Hiss. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Oh! Oh! Nasty vet. She says I'm not impressed at all. No, she isn't. Can <laughs> <laughs> you leave off the cat? She'll have to come out this way because she can just. That's it. I'm going to have to bring her out. <laughs> Have you got it? Yeah. I'll go jump her off. Come on, Hiss. That's a snake. She's cheeky, isn't she? Yeah. I've never known a snake with as much character as this one has. She's lovely. She is lovely. Come on, then. Pebbles isn't sure about rabbit food, so he's sulking under the sofa. We tried to coax him out because uh, Hannah has said that if we can get him to run up and down the stairs a few times each day, it will help with his diet routine. Um, sometimes he goes willingly, other times he just doesn't want to know, but he does need exercise as well as the diet to sort of tone him up. As you can see, he's not too willing at the moment. I can coax him with a chocolate button, but I'll get into trouble. Babes, what's this? Oh, look. 
Are you a chocoholic? Oh, look at that. What's mummy? I can see mummy. Hannah doesn't just dispense advice on health and fitness, she acts on it too. I've lost nearly three stone, but I haven't specifically dieted or anything like that. I've probably cut down on the number of kebabs and all of that as part of it. I'm never going to be Claudia Schiffer, but I'm much happier the way I am now than I was. I think this is pretty much as small as I'm going to get, because I'm not very good at dieting. Definitely fitter than I was. Um, I think the main thing is uh, the days when I go swimming, I'm in a much better mood than I am the days that I don't go swimming. It helps me sort of thrash out a lot of things that are annoying me about the rest of my life. So, yeah, I find it quite useful. Pebbles has a mountain to climb and he's taking it a few steps at a time. He needs to lose about a pound, I think, which isn't a lot to ask, but to a, a little fat person, it's quite a lot. His food bowl's empty and he's tipping it up and looking at me. I, I do tend to think, oh, just a little bit won't hurt, but obviously it does. Do just keep trying. It's Truda's day off and she's on her way to see her best friend Maria, a fellow Norwegian who she met at vet school. Maria has just had a baby. She said to me on the phone the other day, I love it! <laughs> and this is the woman that said to me, first time I met her, oh God, kids, no way, no way, never. She's not going to have kids at all. And that's, so that's, that's the funniest thing, I'm going to tell her that today. While Trudia looks forward to meeting the new arrival, her colleague, Jamie Purvis, is x-raying Skye to see if she really is expecting Dylan's puppies. A bit like a C sheep. On the screen is the result the bird family have been hoping for. What's that head? That's skulls, yeah. And we also see things that look like fish bones in there. And that's the spine. That's the vertebrae. That's the ribs. And if you count up the fish bones... Yeah, one, two, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> four. Well, we think there's about... We think there's five. They're delighted. Sky's puffs will be a lasting reminder of much missed Dylan. I've got part of him back now, am I? With his offspring. It's all right knowing that to have it confirmed is like, yes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, good news, girl. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Maria. Hi, Trina. <laughs> 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 the balloon. Shall we swap? <laughs> it fits, it fits the, uh, the nursery brilliant, it doesn't does. it? Oh, look, you're so small. Oh, it's not small, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> you could try and give birth to him, I tell you. So, so how is it like to have this new little person in your life, then? I think it's great. I just <laughs> love it. But is it rare? Last time we were standing here, he was in there. I mean, I'm sorry, this is such a pathetic thing to say that I just think it's. Such oh, a I, I can't make the connection either. Well, look, look, at look at this, look at the word. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe you. Because it, right. yeah, I think that's, that's the word he's got to have on today. Isn't it lovely? Oh, you beautiful <gasps> little thing. He hasn't got any eyebrows. I don't they think don't they, have any eyebrows. I don't think so. I don't know. I think maybe it's an optional <laughs> extra. <laughs> Didn't you tick that little box? No, Eyebrows? No. Mm. no, not before later. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, oh gorgeous baby. Oh my god. Them. Any male getting anywhere close to me now should just run. <laughs> <Much baby longer. laughs> I want to baby now. Broody Trudy. Yeah. Broody Trudy. <laughs> you are very pretty. Trudy's resolve may be weakening. But for her fellow graduates, husbands and babies remain a pretty remote prospect. I don't think I could uh, incorporate a man into my life at the minute. You know, it's my house and my way of doing things, and my, I value my independence so much, I think I'd find it difficult to accommodate someone, especially with the hours that I work. Um, I think if I did get in a relationship, it wouldn't last more than about five minutes. So I, I'm quite happy with the way I am. It not bother me. Plenty of time yet. <laughs> I'm not on the shelf just yet. Even if I, I could find someone, you know, that I liked, if I did meet someone that I liked, then, you know, I work two weekends out of five. Um, I work till sort of seven or eight o'clock each night. Um, it's very, it would be very difficult for me to put the effort in to start up a relationship, really, while I'm still doing that. I used to sort of say, no, I don't want children, no, I don't need that, no, career woman me, career woman me. Um, but it's the old cliche, as I'm getting a bit older, then yes, I do think that probably I would like to have a family, ultimately. Um, sometimes I think if you don't have children, then there's really very little point in everything, you know. No, I don't want kids. <laughs> I'm moving my mind up my mind. I might change my mind when I meet the right person. But uh, I don't have any targets. I just take each day as it comes, really. I think if you make yourself targets and goals, um, a lot of the time you end up being disappointed. You think, oh, my God, I'm 13. I still haven't met anybody, and I know any having children. Um, so I just, I'll just take life as it comes, really. The only goal I had in life was to be a veterinary surgeon, and I've achieved that goal. So, um, I'm, yeah, I'm very happy. Sam's patient, Hiss, has good reason to be happy too. She's making excellent progress with the help of Sue and daughter Emily. Hey, little Hiss. Right, they go to Citron Mini for me, sweetheart. And then there's your things there. Which one? Okay, do antibiotics first and then vitamin C. Which one? Okay. I don't like it when she struggles because I know she's not going to like what we're going to do to her. The medicine is doing its job, but Hiss finds it a little hard to swallow. That's a good girl. Well done. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's looking better. It's not as red and raw, and it's not bleeding now when we're putting it in where it was before. Um, it's just that she's getting a bit fed up, I think, of us poking her in the mouth. Because <laughs> we have to use a spoon, because she's got sharp teeth. Oh. She's um, picked up, she's playful again. She's wanting to be all over, back into mischief. And I think Sam's very confident that we will get there in the end with her. Trude is back from her visit with Maria. She can't yet see herself finding time for a family, but she has found time for a man's. It took me an awful long time before I could really say, you know, I've got a boyfriend. I think probably I was single in my mind as much as in action for a long time because I just couldn't, I didn't have the energy to deal with anyone else than myself because I was just too busy. I really feel I'm living the same life, but I've just got a more rich life when I come home. You know, I've got someone that I can talk to and someone that seems to care about me and, and someone that can make me laugh. He makes me feel a bit special, and I think this changed my sort of thoughts around maybe settling with one person. I didn't think before that would be possible, to be really happy with one person. I didn't think so. But I do think it might be possible now. I must admit, I'm getting a bit sort of more nesty. But that's only because I met someone that I care a lot about. But 
you know, baby-wise and family-wise and things. I absolutely that is far, far in the future. I've got too many things to do still. It's a new day, and at Sam's practice, Michael and Charlotte Griffith have brought in Wizard, a young stallion with a weak heart. Good boy. With his condition, romance is off the agenda. The excitement could be fatal, so he must be castrated. Sam's boss, John Levison, has left Michael in no doubt as to how serious the condition is. When he examined him, um, and he said, the heart murmur, he said, he was explaining to me that the sort of, you know, great, great heart murmur was on a scale of one to five. One being not so bad and, you know, and nothing really to worry about. Number two, a bit iffy, and he said, well, his is a five. I thought, oh, here we go. It's like champion the mud off when he gets going. He's such a beautiful animal, you know, so cheeky and has, he seems to have a you know sort of a sort of personality all of his own. He's wonderful. After a prolonged labour, Skye has started to give birth to Dylan's puppies. She's just been sleeping all day and by Four to seven, she, their stomachs start contracting, and by seven o'clock, the first one was born. So, and then we had one five minutes later. She ran up over the stairs with the first one. And she had the first one on the settee, and then the second one and the third one was born. And I don't know whether we're looking for any more now. In fact, there are four. Five. Good girl, at first two. Good Six. Good Number seven. Yeah. I don't know if I heard. I got a splint, I think. going to be doing um, a castration on oh, a little stallion. I mean, he's, he's not the fittest of ponies because of his heart. Um, and, the, you know, obviously the least stress that we can cause to him, the better in terms of having ladies around him. Um, so if we take away his male hormones, hopefully having ladies around won't distress him too much. And, it, you know, she'll put too much of a strain on his little heart. The operation is taking place in the practice's purpose-built equine theatre. Because of a retained testicle, Wizard has to have a general anaesthetic. Oh, with any anaesthetic, the, the more you can minimise the time they're under, the better. Because while they're under an anaesthetic, they're a risk. But certainly with critical patients like this one, the sooner we get them off the table, the better. How is it? It's got a very light eye reflex on it. For a horse, any operation is a risky business. Once they're under anaesthetic, their sheer bulk puts enormous pressure on their circulation and lungs. With the operation over, the team need to get Wizard on his feet as soon as possible. Wizard still isn't out of danger. It's not until John can hear a breath that they'll know he's okay.
At last, John hears the breath he's been waiting for. Yeah, we're in. Oh, there's sometimes what we call breath hold for a while. That's what makes the job interesting. Gets the old adrenaline going. All right, Wiz. Wizard is feeling a bit wobbly, but he'll soon recover. It won't be long before Michael and Charlotte can see whether or not the operation has tamed his wild spirit. There's nothing tame about Hannah's next patient. Lois Garner's cat, Tan, has got herself into a terrible tangle. Her collar's caught in her mouth. That's the bit she's got in her mouth. The, ah, I've done it. Oh, you. Oh! Ah! She's out of both now. Yeah, I don't The last thing she wants is a helping hand. <laughs> yes. She's either pulled a tooth out or a claw. Now we all need to see the bit. Yeah, I'll see. She's got her collar caught round her face, caught over her mouth, so she's very violent about it. Please be careful. She's just had both of us. Let's see if we get around. That's right, is it important, this collar? No, it can't no. Be mm -hmm. I really, honestly, I, I really don't like collars on no. cats. All right, it's going now. It's going. It's on its way, sweetie. That's it. Out. The thing's gone now. I don't know what she's done. Right, let's have a look. You made a mess of yourself, haven't you? Honestly. Oh, Cut her, her mouth or something. Yeah. All right, you look like you've done ten rounds. Oh dear, I, I think it. probably I wouldn't stitch that. I think it's probably going to heal better without. It's just, It'll be just sore. It'll it? just be sore. We'll get her onto some antibiotics. She's bruised all her teeth and her gums and everything. I think she's all stressed out and probably got shocked herself a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was good. Just bathe that with salt water. It should heal heal up fine. Thank I don't you very much. We need to see her again. Amen. Oh, even in my short working career, I've seen a number of cats that have got their foot stuck in their collar and the collar can actually work its way through the skin and give them incredibly deep, nasty wounds. I mean, if you want to identify your cat, if you're worried that if it might get lost, you want to get it back, then I would just get it microchipped. Identifying Sky's new pups is proving tricky. You got a little boy on here? You're a little boy. Boy, the two boys. The birds have decided to keep one of the two males in memory of Dylan. You've got to be a good boy though, haven't you? You've got to be like Daddy Naughty. No. Wasn't Dylan naughty? Mm. Was he? <laughs> he was quite naughty, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, he was naturally the sky, obviously. Oh. <laughs> in that way. He's <laughs> got the shakes with me. <laughs> <laughs> With me, huh? It must be the vet. See the vet smell, huh? Oh, yeah. So where do you keep this cuffing? Is it? Is it? Yeah, that's there? it there. Yeah, oh, that's Daddy's. That really nice, isn't it? I might just add his um, date of birth and well, the date he died, which was his birthday anyway. Oh, that's bizarre. Mm. That is really beautiful. Dylan may be gone, but he's not forgotten. Wizard is not the pony he once was, but that's not a bad thing, according to the family. Before the op, he was, uh, he, didn't like me. he was definitely a little stallion who was um, quite snarly and bad-tempered and would take a chunk out his look at you, whereas now he's a lot gentler. Kim can handle him now and uh, he's very much part of the family, isn't he, Kim? He is a little really? star. I just hope he lives to a good ripe old age. I'm convinced he'll outlive me. <laughs> oh, 
Next week on Vets in Practice, Truda takes a walk on the wild side. That's a typical posture. <laughs> Alison treats Lucky, a cat with jaundice. You see his whole ear is yellow. And Craig gets the grips with bladder stones. And that is why I thought he's got a sore bladder.